Gators Breakdown. Because there's never a dull moment in Gator Nation. The Gators Breakdown Podcast is ready to go. I'm your host, David Waters. You can find me on social media at Gator Dave underscore SEC. And if you're watching the YouTube version, you can already see joined by a very special guest. Thanks to Florida Victorious, Trey Wilson, wide receiver for the Gators. Trey, man, I can't uh, thank you enough for hopping on Gators Breakdown for the first time right here. And uh, I, I know Billy Napier doesn't really let freshmen talk. So last year we didn't get to hear from you a whole lot. But now in your second season, we get to hear from you a lot more. So thanks for hopping on Gators Breakdown. Yeah, no problem. Hey, a little connection now. Uh, I am Donald David Waters the third, and mm. your name is Eugene Wilson the third. So I- I'm assuming that's where Trey comes from. Nah, most definitely. Yeah. There we go. There we go. So yeah, a little. A little uh, I'm a third. You're a third there. So uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep, keep, unique, you know. Exactly. We, we'll, we'll keep. We'll keep the family name going. Well, I, look, I got. A, I, I have a daughter. So I don't have a son. So it's probably <laughs> going to end with me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know I gotta keep the little, you know, train going. There we go, there we go. So, um, everybody, hit that like button, subscribe to Gators Breakdown right here on the YouTube version or your favorite podcast platform as we get this interview going with Trey Wilson as we dive in right here. Spring practice going on. So, hey, let's start right there. How how spring practice going so far? Uh, I think five practices so far. Yeah, uh, everything's going pretty good. You know, it's a lot of intensity every day. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of energy, you know, with this new staff, the new guys coming in, the young guys coming in. It's, it's a lot of energy. And then afterwards, you know, in the locker room, it's, it's, it's a lot of hard laughing. You know, it's, it's good, you know, team camaraderie and everything, you know, all being built together. You know, it's, it's just a process right now, but everything, you know, rolling pretty good right now. So for you, you didn't you didn't early enroll last year, so you didn't get to take part in, in, in spring practice as a true freshman. Yeah. So. What's the benefit for you of of going through spring practice, given that this is your first one, but you do have all that experience of last season? Um, I say you know it's a lot more time. Like I know, for instance, uh, you know, pretty much putting in all the work before spring ball started. You know, like in the weight room and all that. You know, a lot more time with the nutrition staff and all that too. Uh, that's probably like the only uh big difference really from you know coming in the summertime. So let's go there. There was, you know, you, you had you mentioned strength and conditioning. There was a little bit of a change there. Uh, so from your perspective, is it? And I guess, you know, is it more position uh, as well? Like, is do you feel like this strength and conditioning program that you just went through was it more suited for you as a wide receiver? Do you also see it benefit the the team as a whole? You know, what's the difference between your position group and you know the team as a whole as far as strength and conditioning goes? I feel like, you know, it goes with the team as a whole. You know, you really can just say that off of results. Um, you know, guys, you know, they every time they come in the locker room after a lift, they talk about how sore it is and, you know, how they feeling good. You know, it's less injuries. So, you know, it's just, you know, like big things popping out. Now, if we follow you on social media, you know, I do follow you on Twitter, and I, and I see also you post, like, your own workout videos and what you're doing on your own time. So, what are those things that you are working on that, you know, aren't necessarily at Florida in that strength conditioning program, but things that you want to uh, get better at anyway? Yeah, um, you know, we have a little off breaks. Uh, one of my coaches, you know, he used to tell me, you know, keep your sore sharp. So, you know, I'm not trying to take too much time off and, you know, come back too rested and none of that. So, you know, I'm trying to, you know, pretty much work on the little details that I'm not really able to focus on because, you know, we we taking like a practice and all that. While we up here in Gainesville, so I love all time to worry about the details and stuff, little extra things like add to my game and be able to come back and you know show off. So it's not just necessarily just strength and conditioning when you're away from the program. You're working on the receiver, the position aspect, and and strength and conditioning. Yeah, a little more detail, and even when it comes to strength and conditioning, it's a lot more detailed stuff like. Uh, not necessarily like bench and stuff. It's like a lot of, you know, body wear, like rubber bands and all that, a lot of resistance. Okay. Uh, so let's go back last year. It was your first season, very successful first season as a true freshman. What was the most important aspect of your growth last season as the season progressed? Like what do you pinpoint of why you were able to put it together so fast? Um, I feel like I'm just – one of my abilities is to adapt real well. And I feel like, you know, coming in, my uh, my head where I was at was just to come in and make an impact. You know, uh, not I didn't really think I was too big-headed, you know, coming in, demanding a starting spot and all that. You know, I just had to work for everything. 
come in, you know, realize, you know, right now I'm an underdog. And so I need to, you know, pretty much earn my name, earn my number, you know, let them guys know, you know, what three really mean. So uh, that's really just how I took it day by day. Did there Was there any doubt that crept in? I know you started fall camp, and now I think you, what, you dealt with a hamstring injury or you had a little hiccup toward the beginning of fall camp. Was it a uh, – was there, was there, I guess, was there any worry there? Uh, I mean, you know, it, it was a lot of uh, stress because, I mean, nobody wanted to sit out, you know, first couple of days of camp. Yeah. Uh, you know, see a lot of guys getting after it. You know, it was kind of, you know, stressful. But uh, as far as, you know, doubt and worry, it wasn't too much of that because, you know, I knew once my time came, you know, it was, it was bound to go down. So we take season one, the success that you had, but where do you want to get better? Where, where, where do you want to see yourself take steps and you – going into season two? Uh, I know I feel like a lot last year. It was a lot left on the field as far as, you know, little trip ups or pretty much I feel like if I wasn't so little last year that it would be a lot more yards after catch. Uh, so that's kind of something that I picked up on this year. You know, I put on a few pounds and, uh, you know, I'm also working on a lot. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot of details to everything as far as like, you know, top of the route, you know, separating from DB to top of the route releases, everything, you know, hands, catching on jugs every day. You know, it's just – there's always room for improvement. So when we see that, and you mentioned everything that you want to get better at, how do you see your role growing in your second season? Is it is it more of what the same we saw last year and just get better at that, or do you see your role expanding? Do you, will you play outside more? Will you get more handoffs? You know, I know we don't want to give too much of the, I guess, quote-unquote yeah, secret. Yeah, you know, I, I feel like – <laughs> uh, it's just going to be a lot, and, you know, everything that, you know, leads to winning, they, you know, as simple as it can be. Um, but as my role, I feel like, you know, I still feel pretty young. You know, it's my first spring season, so I feel like, you know, it's a lot of questions to be asked, a lot, you know, to soak in. But, you know, with the new guys coming in, there's also a lot of, um, you know, mentoring that I could do as far as, like, you know, a little stuff to keep their head up, not let them doubt the question themselves. So, so, you know, um, it's kind of a couple roles that I'm playing this year. Well, let's extend on that. So there are some freshmen that have come in, Tank Hawkins, TJ Abrams. Um, they have a little bit more of a benefit than, like, as we go back to your point, you didn't go through spring last year, but they're going through spring this year. Uh, what You kind of mentioned you know, what you would share with them, but uh, you know, how are they coming along? And is, you know, do you think that you've been able to you know, kind of shed some of your insight from last year to help those guys come along a bit faster? Yeah, most definitely. Um, you know, I feel like, you know, they're progressing every day. And you can tell that nothing, you know, that we done went through already is really shaking them up. And they, they seem kind of excited, you know, to experience every moment, every day. You know, starting off from conditioning to strength and conditioning to up to the first day of spring ball, you know, they just seem excited to get out there every day. And that's pretty uh, that's pretty important to me. All right, so I got to ask, if we talked about maybe your, your role expanding or, you know, you growing from season one to season two, I, I do have to ask you – what would you prefer, maybe? Would you rather take a screen past 70 yards, or would you rather catch a bomb 70 yards down the field? Uh, i say whatever one leaves that catapult with the high speed, you know. <laughs> but if that got to be a screen, I really got, you know, put on them afterburners, and I'll probably be it. But, shoot, I really – I've never been asked that. That's the kind of uh, – I'd probably go with the screen. <laughs> I think so too, man. Like, you know, yeah. just imagine Swamp 90,000 fans going crazy. You catch yeah. a little five. Yeah, yeah, experience it with them a little bit. Checking out Jumbo Tron, you know. <laughs> yeah, look in the review mirror just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Um, <laughs> hey, so, uh, Trey, we're coming together thanks to Florida Victorious, of course. And, you know, we've seen your work out there. You've been to elementary schools, the YMCA. You know, do you have a favorite story uh, from these community events that you've done through Florida Victorious? Oh, uh, I mean, it's it's a good experience every time, you know, every month, you know, we get to get up with some kids and pretty much, you know, share our day with them. And I think that's pretty important for all of us, you know, kind of remember where we used to be at one point in our life. Um, so, you know, I, I enjoy my time with them. And, you know, I don't really look at it as a chore or nothing at all. I kind of look at it as, you know, pretty much like a blessing and a benefit for us. Is there any personal story, anything that stands out that you've done so far? Um, not necessarily. You know, I just build new relationships and, you know, new bonds. I, I find things I have in common with new kids every month. So, you know, it's just kind of something that's continuing. Awesome, awesome. And to keep that going, you know, before we move forward, of course, the big announcement, you know, University of Florida, Florida Victorious, 
you know, coming together for the orange and blue game. That is April 13th. It's going to be brought to you by Florida Victorious. And part of that is an exclusive Florida Victorious member benefit. Florida Victorious will host an exclusive autograph signing for its members with head coach Billy Napier and Gator football players following the game. It is only for Florida Victorious members. All you have to do is go to the game, be a member of Florida Victorious, and get a chance to meet and greet your favorite players, get their autographs. It's a great time right now to sign up. $25 month level gets you all, you know, also gets you access to the message board at Florida Victorious. Get some insider practice notes from spring practice there. So right now it's a no-brainer. You help support the players, get access to the players like here on Gators Breakdown or in person at the Orange and Blue game. Use code GatorsBD when you sign up at FloridaVictorious.com. You get 20% off your first month at Florida Victorious. Uh, Trey, let's keep the NIL talk going just a, a little bit. It, I know. I think. I think it was last summer uh, or in fall camp. You got a chance to, I think, interact with fans as well. Um, yeah, how was that experience? You know, I, I think that's one great benefit of you know NIL and, and Florida Victorious is you know, we get access uh, to to guys like you more than we ever have in the past. Mm. Um, you know, I think it, it's kind of it, it's really neat, especially you know, you know, guys coming in, coming in, you know, from high school and they get to our, you know, kind of feel like they're pro. And I feel like that's pretty much a big thing. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot more experiences to the fans. You know, they don't have to go to NFL games all the time, NFL camp all the time anymore. You know, it's a lot more, you know, local situations that's handled with this. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's about it, really. Do you, do you have a dream NIL deal? Like if any business or company out there was to come to you, mm. who, who would you want that to be? I don't, I've never really, you know, thought about it like that. But uh, if it would be anything, it would probably be something that I probably, like, you know, interact with every week, you know, as far as, like, food or, you know, yeah. some type of, you know, shopping, shopping spree that I'd be on. All right, so if you, if you, if you say food quickly, just – like, what's the restaurant? What's the restaurant that you, you know, you, you, you can't go without? Probably, like, Chipotle. You know, that's probably my go-to. I'll be there a few times a week. <laughs> No. Man, yeah, that's, 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 the same yeah, thing, that's the same thing Noel Portnagin told, told me. Yeah. Chipotle. yeah, yeah. I, I'm assuming Chipotle is a big player hit then. Yeah, because, you know, it, it's a lot. It, uh, shoot, it's just so good. You know, <laughs> and it, it's kind of healthy at the same time, too. There you, like, go. you know, it's kind of like you want a big meal from Chipotle, you want a big meal from McDonald's. It's an easy answer right there. Yeah. Staff, staff probably likes that, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Trey, are you a gamer? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Okay, so there we go. Uh, so you got to be ready for the new EA Sports College football game. Oh, my God, I can't wait. I'm going to stop buying Madden and all that because I feel like, you know, it's been a point where we just wasting our money for the same game. So once uh, the NCAA come out, we're going to be on that for sure. Were you, were, you like, were you like the first one to put your name in? To- uh, nah, nah, it took me a little <laughs> bit. You know, I was just on it, but. I'm putting it in. There's probably no question you were gonna put your name in there, right? At all. There you, go. you gotta you gotta play with yourself in the game. Yeah, I mean my whole life I've been growing up, you know, playing on Madden, creating my own player, making like five five and stuff as a little kid, <laughs> you know, putting my number in, 99 speed, all that. So, you know, being able to see like, you know, realistic stats and stuff, you know, not made by my own self, you know, I think that's pretty cool. Being able to, you know, make plays on the field. That is something I'm looking forward to. I, I want to get with Florida Victorious. I got this idea. I want to get you guys, your player reactions to whatever your player ratings are mm-hmm. in the game. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, yeah, that would be smooth. Uh, I'm not, uh, I can't guess everybody. everybody so if you're not a 99 speed, what's 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 the feedback going to be? Uh, shoot. You got to put the head down and keep it grinding. You know, I have to make a, a, couple, a couple plays. Is the, is, the team look, is the team looking forward to the game? Oh, yeah. I was yep. even talking to a couple of guys. Like, we might have to have a little tournament going on. Hey. It might take a while, but shoot. I know. That don't be crazy. Yeah, I think, there's a, I think there's a lot we can do with that. I think it'll be fun. Yeah. Hey, uh, Trey, let's go to um, Ricky Pearsall. Uh, what did he mean uh, to you last year? I think it was probably great and beneficial for you to have a guy who had so much experience. And, you know, I think probably, you know, I think really helped catapult your career at Florida. What's up? Um, I mean, first of all, I'm just like really proud of the dude. You know, I've only known him for a year now, really, and yeah. I feel like I've known him my whole life. Like he was like a big brother to me. How quick he was able, you know, take me under his wing. 
my first couple of days there, our connection was just bright and, you know, just, you know, locked in for real, cement. And pretty much if, if it wasn't working and if it wasn't pushing each other, it was our laughs and jokes. And, you know, at the end of the season when pretty much I realized that last snap was the last snap, it just really hurt because it felt like, you know, a part of my game was lost. Like, it felt like I've been playing with him forever, you know, but uh, I feel like, he, he most definitely had an impact on my season last year. He still has an impact on my game now as I'm still, you know, asking questions, working with him, talking to him, you know, every other day or so. Uh, but, you know, it's shoot, the sky's the limit for him. Did you get to see him at uh, Pro Day last week? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was kind of, you know, disappointed. I wasn't able to see his route running in person because he wasn't, you know, going. But, shoot, I'd have seen a lot of that my freshman year. So, it was yeah. So for people who aren't watching the video version, but they're listening to it, there is a, I think this image was from the Florida, Florida state game. Yeah. Uh, and you guys, you know, talking to each other, hugging each other after the game, you have to share if it was in great detail, but what was kind of the message as he's talking to you right here after the field, after the last game of the season? Um, to sum it up, it just kind of like passing the baton, you know, uh, I say, I say that was pretty much it because if I'm being honest, you know, at the last snap, uh, you know, every season, I just always break down in tears because, you know, I'm leaving everything out on the field. And, you know, he came over, you know, support me, you know, just hold me, like, let me let it out on him. And, you know, I'm grateful for that. Pretty much he just let me know everything that I'm going to have to put in. And, you know, you know, like it's my time now. And uh, he let me know how proud of him, how proud of, uh, proud of me he was and all that. So uh, that was a that was a pretty deep moment for me. Um that, that most definitely left a mark on my heart, for sure. Awesome, man. Great to hear that passion coming out there, being a Gator. Um, I, I got to know, what, what's, it, what's it been like working with Graham Mertz for, you know, now a year, going through the offseason, mm-hmm. going through spring practice? Well, I guess y'all couldn't do much in the offseason because he was recovering from the uh, yeah. the, the injury. Well, actually, shoot, Graham, that's my guy. But, yep. uh, you know, during the season, when I first came in, you know, he, it was real easy to get along with him. You know, things just kept building. And then even in the offseason, I feel like we done got real close as far as, uh, you know, we done been putting the extra work together, you know, talking uh, about lockers and all that. It's just a lot that goes into it. And it's just really easy, you know, to conversate with him and build connection with him because he's just that type of person, you know, real easy person to get to, you know, you know, pick pick brain. And, you know, he knows and loves the game. So, you know, any question, I don't really think it's a question he can't answer for real. I'm glad you said that because that's probably that's where I was going to go next. I, I'm assuming you know just all his experience as long as he's played football. You know, for a guy like you coming in as a freshman, you had Pierce solid in the receiver room, but also your quarterback had that much experience. So it probably, yeah. I think, you know, pro- probably helped along your, your your game as well. Yeah, most definitely. I most definitely think you know, just just you know, in a few years, like I feel like even just in this one year, I you know feel like a pro. Like, pretty, you know, freshman coming in as far as knowledge because, shoot, it's college football. Like, the separation in between the levels is just crazy. And I never really experienced it or understood it until now. And so, you know, knowing them guys, you know, that they done been through the process multiple times, you know, especially at different schools too, you know, you can really trust them. So let's get into the wide receiver room a little bit. The new name coming along, Chimray DK, through the through the transfer portal. Uh, I know he's just gotten back to, to spring practice after starting out limited or whatever. What, what have you seen from him and what he can bring to the table as, as you guys have to replace a guy like Ricky Pearsall? Uh, sure. When it comes to him, I'd say, like, you can sum it up with just leadership. And he, he a dog, for real. Uh, it, it really showed out when we was on the same team, competing team, back in, uh, I think it was, like, January, February. And, you know, we was putting in our work, you know, our little, uh, you could say, like, our little mat drill type type work um but pretty much he's like dead tired but he's still going 100 percent and still you know chant on the guys making sure we off our knees hands off our head like like this dude different like like he just has like no no stop you know he on full go all the time man pretty much you know obviously that's gonna drive me you can't see a guy like that and you know drive you at all so i feel like you know he's gonna and besides all the plays he's gonna make on the field because he's been making some plays the past few days he's been back as all the plays he made, he most definitely gonna make an impact with his mentality to the team. Yeah, I know a whole lot doesn't get out for spring practice, but I have heard since he's come back, especially Saturday, he had some really yeah. good catches. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, he's getting open now. Yeah, there we go. 
Um, so you came in with two other high profile receivers, Aiden Mizell and Andy Jean, and uh, we didn't get to see as much from them, those two guys last year, as we as we saw from you. So um, were they a little frustrated last year, and, and was it motiv- probably using it as motivation to to come out and, and show out this spring and get on the field this fall? Um, I feel like anybody coming in with expectations to play as a freshman, I feel like obviously that can be frustrating for anybody. But uh, seeing with them, they, you know, I couldn't really tell with them. You know, they just enjoyed being a part of the process. And, you know, they was taking everything, not taking nothing for granted. And uh, that's that most definitely going to lead over to this season. I already see, you know, progression to both of the dudes, you know, in the weight room and on the field. So uh, it's, it's a lot that goes into it. All right, so – we're gonna finish this interview. We'll, we'll have a little bit of fun. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get to know you uh, a little bit more uh, before we sign off right here. So I, I ask every, uh, yeah, I ask every player this now. So everybody everybody who listens to get your breakdown knows what's coming. All right, Billy Napier's gonna to come to you. Say, all right, Trey, you will get to pick the uniform combination we wear <laughs> for, for, for this game. Right, so, so, like growing up, seeing all the combinations, like you got the blue helmet, the white yep. jersey with the blue pants, like. That was one of my favorite, you know, seeing, you know, CJ2K, like, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, that's probably my favorite right there. Which one? The blue helmet with the white jersey with the blue pants and then Ooh. the black cleats. The black cleats really top it off. Oh, you yeah. know, I, really, I really liked the, um, the black jersey last year. Yeah. I think it most definitely would be better at nighttime. I was kind of was kind of shaking up that we, uh, <laughs> we had to play, you know, in the heat. But, uh, shoot. Man, speaking of that, though. That catch you made for the – I think it was the first touchdown of the game. Um, Arkansas. Arkansas? Yeah. yeah. I think that pass from Mertz to you – I don't – That was a dime. There you go, man. I'm telling you. That was one of the best throws and catches of the year. Yeah, I know they did a cool calm collective like it was nothing to it. Yeah. I mean, that was – that was uh, for whatever reason, that I know it was in a loss or whatever, but as far as a – you know, I think a pure good play goes, that was probably one of my favorite ones of the season. I guess yeah. – I'm just because I was looking at you too. I was just like, man, this this freshman is coming along so well. I mean, you yeah, know, we're like, just past, yeah, man. It just I mean, you, know, you, you could really see it week by week, and that that play really stands out from from you and Mertz both, man. But that was I know it was a simple. I mean, not really simple, but it kind of looked more simple than it really was. But mm. uh, that was that was a big time play. Is it worth being paid off? Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, and that's another thing about the video game coming out. We're talking about uniform combination. I mean, Florida's got so many. You just, you could almost roll out a whole different uniform combination for every game. Oh, yeah. When I'm playing the game, I'm not going to have the same uniform back to back. All right. So you may have already answered this, but that was just more restaurants. So we're going, we're going to do some rapid fire fun questions here. Mm. If you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Like food or restaurant? Food. Uh, well, shoot. I, I need my carbs. It's probably, probably <laughs> pasta. Probably taking out Fredo pasta. Okay, so got yeah. everything really. Uh, but that's up there for me too. So uh, I'm good. Um, if you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? Super speed. I think I figure. It's just uh, you already got that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I ain't there yet. But, you know. <laughs> Look, um, it's, it's just cool, you know. It's just cool. I feel like you know my favorite superhero is Spider Man, but it's just scary. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you don't like heights? No, nah, not really. No. Okay, okay. Um, maybe that might be the answer here. If you were to be a cartoon character, who would it be? Shoot. Uh, I used to grow up thinking SpongeBob was cool. <laughs> you know, he's able to do a lot of crazy stuff. Now that there I look at it nowadays, you know, I'm older. Obviously, that jump is not real. Or, you know, not <laughs> possible. But, you know, growing up, I thought it was cool. I can do little cool things. Live at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> uh, if you could only watch one movie for the rest of your life, what would it be? Uh, first thing that came to my mind was Uncle Drew, but I, I'm probably thinking of like something that's motivating. Uh, I'm gonna go with Uncle Drew for right now. <laughs> okay. There we go. And does pineapple belong on pizza? I ain't never tried it, but um. Everybody got their own preferences. So, yeah, I don't know, think uh, it does. I, I'm not a big fan you of it. Tried it. I have tried it. I'm not a big fan. 
All right, well, then that's probably the answer right there. <laughs> no. I'll try it because I'm like, hey, my wife loves it, but yeah. I, I'm just not, I'm not I'm not a fan of it. So. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. There we go. Yeah. Uh, all right, just cheese for me. I'm I'm not hard to please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, uh, Trey, thanks, man, for hopping on right here, at Gators Breakdown. Anything out there you want to tell Gator Nation? You want to share with Gator Nation as you go through spring practice and get ready for a, a big time? So, well, hey, you know what? Given how you know, there's a lot of talk. What what is your thought on this? All this talk about how hard this schedule is for Florida in twenty twenty. Oh, I love it. Yeah. You know, you know, I, like I said, I love being an underdog, and uh, you know, it just builds for a better story. And you know, it really it, the schedule so hard that it forces us to not you know take the foot off the pedal. So really, we're taking a week by week by week. Right now, we have our mind focused on Miami. Yeah. Like, that's how we're doing. So you know, it's just uh, all I really gotta say is just stay tuned. So besides Miami, just because I know it's the next game and the first game, is there is there one team that you grew up just despising that is on the schedule or you know? Is um, that- I mean, I've never been you know too much of a, a big you know hater towards other teams and stuff growing up. You know, I just I'm still in the game. You know, I love it. Um, but after last year, I most definitely most definitely have a, a type of feeling towards Florida State. Yeah. Not not too much, but you know, when, once it get to that week, it's gonna be uh, you know, lights gonna be dim. Yeah, there we go, there we go. So, uh, anything, any message you want to send out there to to, to Gator Nation trade before we go? Uh, yeah, like I said, just stay tuned. You know, some surprises coming there. There we go. There we go. Wide receiver Trey Wilson right here on Gators Breakdown. Trey, man, I can't thank you enough. Great interview. I'm glad Gator Nation gets to know you uh, a bit more right here on Gator's Breakdown. And, and we got to do it again soon, okay? Thank you. Thanks, man.